That shit is actually just heroin in a pill form. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when crack first came out, it was a party drug. Mm -hmm. Then five years later, people were skinny, strung out. Wait till you see these kids in a few years. And it's a slow progress. I remember um, when I was probably like <coughs> 13, 14, I used to sneak out and go out Park Heights and uh, right in the home. And uh, it was an old head out there, real slick, you know, slacks, all that shit, Gators. He was the big boy in the neighborhood. He was getting high. Y'all that been around for a while, y'all remember when the old slick willies? They was getting all the money, but they was getting high. You couldn't see it because the money was masking it. And then when they fell off in the game, then you saying, bang, he a full blown ass. So that's what's happening. People need to stop using drugs. Um, where was I at before that? Oh, we kind of going around. Oh, Anybody got? Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just, just asking you a question about you know getting the authority, whether it's regional or local. Or before if you got a family and you can't afford, like my brother worked with him. Kevin worked down big boys. He got a big family. He can't afford to go on the road like me, not money wise, but time wise. He married all that. Work at the port, it's not going to be as much money, but it's going to it's gonna be better than any job out here. And if you really try and go for the gusto, get in the fuel. Yeah, work, if you can work nights, get in the fuel. And, oh, yeah, that's why I was at. It's a good old boy network. So that's when I got into the white people, the bikers, uh, females getting in it. It's a hierarchy in it. And a lot of them guys, they've been down there 20, 30 years. Things are changing from what I hear, but... You gonna have to it, it, when you gonna have to get into that system, and always be available and make the most of it because you ain't gonna get the same load they get, but you still gonna fall in there. I was about to, I was about to say that because like I told you, I'm in a, I've been in a few of them for like two three years now. Right. So I'm getting the ins and the outs of it. That's I think I asked you before was it worth it to stay in it because I know you was talking about the authority. You told me just to stay in it. And kind yeah. Of, I told you the company I was with Carol. He was like he told me about that. I like, managed real work down there. Yeah, Jarrell, uh, I think his last name Jackson. I probably know him if I see it. Dark skin dude, but um, what they paying y'all like thirty dollars an hour, thirty five? Like not to get in your um, yeah, 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 it's, it's, it's personal business. What you need to do? Don't pay no bills for three months. Don't pay no bills. Don't pay no bills. Uh, billers, creditors have a billing cycle. So, you miss one payment, that's not going to get you evicted. That's not going to cut your credit card off. It's not going to get your car repossessed. Give yourself 90 days and save every dollar you got and buy a truck. Lease it on to them, and the money you'll be able to make within the first two weeks, you can pay all that stuff back. That's what I do. Yeah. See what I'm saying? What, what I start off saying? Sacrifice. So, you gotta do what you gotta do to get ahead. Right, and so not to uh, keep uh, bringing up biblical references, but what did what it say in the, the bar is slave to the lender? Yeah. How many people you know been working all their life don't do shit but go to work and pay bills? Mm -hmm. Fuck them bills, man. You get your truck, you be able to uh, buy whatever you want to buy. Be honest with you. And. Back to what I was talking about, um, company drivers. A lot of people complain about driving right now because uh, they own us and they had this high cost of living. So a lot of people leave some trucks. Or they went against my advice when I started buying trucks, thought they was going to have all these drivers, and they got a revolving door. Right now is the best time for drivers because companies are paying more to company drivers now. You know FedEx would pay... Um, $45 an hour, and you get time and a half at eight hours a day. Right. Once you're in there for the fourth year, going into that fifth year. Mm -hmm. I got my nephew a job paying 90 something thousand dollars a year. He only like 23. I got a cousin right now uh, delivering food. He doing like 2,600, 2,800 hours a week. Mm -hmm. the food industry is a top payer as well as a company driver, because that stuff had to go out. But it's hard living, it's night work. So you're going to have to 
Take, you open the door, it's flush. Mm-hmm. You gotta touch every last box. Uh, a lot of people tap out. But you can make some bread doing that. Um, I don't suggest doing it for real long unless you're just trying to stay in shape or fuel. I would stay there. Right now is the best time to buy trucks is people losing them. Remember when uh, rates was real high? You couldn't even... <laughs> That's another thing. People went out and bought all these overpriced trucks. Rates was high, so people was buying trucks. What I teach y'all late, uh, earlier, in the earlier seminar, supply and demand. The less of something you have, the more it's worth. Uh, so the, these $20,000 trucks was going for seventy, eighty thousand dollars 80000 And they stuck with them. Now they got regular rates with inflated truck prices. Now, what I teach y'all about cycles, rates went back to normal. People losing trucks. It created a high dem- uh, supply of repos. So trucks are cheap now. So 10 grand to get you in the game. That was the rule of thumb in the beginning. I started in 2010. I came home August 31st, 2010. I started school 30 days later. Back then the rule of thumb was 10,000. 10 to get you in the game. So would, the, would they pay you? You can do it in less than in 90 days. I'm being generous. I did it in 60. I've been through 19, 20 trucks. I, it ain't always been good. I got hit by a fire truck before, lost everything. And uh, then the city, Atlanta, they said they was under cyber hostage. So they prolonged and they never wanted to pan me out. Mm-hmm. But then they said it's, uh, it's a state facility, a unit or whatever you call it, saying you can't sue the state. So I couldn't get my money from the fire department. Mm-hmm. I was living in the loft down in Dallas I went and worked for these Indians, East Indians, who was real good to me, by the way. They were paying me thirteen fifty a week. I lived in that truck for two months and then went and started my authority. And within the next three months, I saved up like 24000 Then I started buying two trucks and two trailers every other month. And I did that for nine months, so I got like seven trucks. And then I signed for the five more trucks and trailers. At this point, I was paying so much and so frequent that uh, I could get trucks on paper. I could just sign my name. I never went back and got the last five. Um, and this is why I'm telling y'all, don't go out there and get no bunch of trucks. Cause I went through the nonsense. How many of y'all know people that got multiple trucks? Are they crying? I'm crying. <laughs> How many trucks you got? I got three. You keep drivers in them all the time? Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they get in that fucking truck up. Then they you then fix that shit. And you still drive, don't you? Yeah. So you have a good week. Damn, I ain't made eighty five hundred. Mm-hmm. Right, then here he go two thousand dollars. Well he hit something, don't say nothing. And he wanna get paid. Right. Fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm trying to save y'all um the headache because you're gonna get in the hamster wheel with all this money. one time I was doing like a hundred and thirty thousand a month. I know people right now that had 30 trailers. And I'm, y'all only see what y'all see and what I show y'all. Y'all don't see all the people that I deal with. I I, I, I really got uh, some serious influence aside from what I show y'all. And y'all see the cars and the yard full of trucks. Y'all don't see the $18,000 a month insurance payment. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> Only four of the trucks running. And all the other shit is just a money pit. And y'all don't see all the shit that be happening in the middle of the night, neither. Which I'm not going to talk about. But um, it's more to trucking than just buying a truck and driving. So I don't suggest you can do what you want to do. What people do all the time. And then they call me trying to get me to fix the problem. <clears throat> and you could have avoided it. Don't get no whole bunch of trucks. If anything, buy you a truck and buy you a spare. Uh, Get you a day cab and sit it on ice. You don't have to insure it and you don't have to tag it if it's paid for. Mm -hmm. Find you a yard to park it and check on that motherfucker Mm because people like to nip shit off of trucks. They ain't got to park, they'll start taking shit, especially if it's left unattended for a long time and nobody see you coming to it. Get you a truck and get you a day cab. You don't need insurance and you don't have to tag it. Why? Because if you go on the uh, Maryland business portal, if you're trucking the shop, you can transfer the tag online without going in there. 
take the truck uh, tag that's active, put it on the truck that's sitting, and depending on who your insurance company is, you can log in and add and take off the truck at will. So if you were progressive with somebody, you can go online and add a truck or a driver or whatever without calling them. And then take your other truck off because you don't want to get in a situation where you got months and months of insurance piling up. And that's a, another thing to take people out of the game. They're running and running, and then before you know it, they're two months behind in the insurance. Insurance cancel. The insurance is the boss of the trucking company, uh, uh, industry. They tell you whether you can haul freight. They tell you who you can hire. They tell you even if you can hire yourself. Matter of fact, if you ain't got no insurance, you don't have a trucking company. You have a truck. That's the difference between an owner-operator and having your own authority. It's three levels. The company driver. You drive for a company, you get paid by the hour, or percentage, or by the load. Owner-operator. You own the truck, and you lease it onto a company. It's not your name on the side of it. And having your own authority. If you don't, the only difference between uh, owner-operator and having your own authority is insurance. Once you get your truck, that's half the battle. So the thing to do is progressively start off as a driver, save your money, keep your cost of living low, buy you a truck, lease it onto a company, run extremely hard, real fast, save your money up. You got the truck, you leased on, you're making $2,500, $3,000, maybe $3,500 a month if you don't like the port or something, or if you down there. If you get in with fuel, I would stay there. Just stay there because it really ain't nothing else going to pay you like that. Yeah, that's, but, that's what I did. Yeah. I was the owner operator for uh, Pepco Express. Yeah. What they doing? Five thousand, seven thousand a week? I was making like on a on a good week, I was making like forty five hundred a week. Right. And then and then probably like six hundred would get taken away from from paying fuel. Uh, right. So yeah. you said six hundred. Remember earlier I said fifteen hundred a week in fuel, yeah. which would mean you running twice as hard. Then you remember what I was saying that about was the two good. years ago though. Right, but but I, I'm agreeing with you. What, I, what I'm tapping into is the good old boy network. See, it's people there that got choice loads. Mm -hmm. Some older white men. Yeah. And they pay is completely different. Like, Carol Fuel was notorious for uh, notorious. I've been in a lot of different states, so I'm going to ask them to stop. <laughs> Carol Fuel is notorious for being racist. Yeah. And that kind of go across the board. Some things are changing, but it ain't changed yet. So just be aware of that when you get in there, because there's some guys, and you, you see them pickup trucks, and they got them boats outside their house and all that type of stuff. And, uh, and free transit, they get over there too. Yeah. yeah. All I wanted to do when I first started was fuel, because I thought because it, it was dangerous, you had to pay more. I put in so many applications, they sent me a letter back, told me to stop. Oh, I was still in school. I was like, that's what I want to do. That's where the money at. Mm -hmm. But um, that stands, that stands true. But in, in all in all, if you bring home between twenty five hundred and thirty five hundred in your pocket a week, I'm not talking about gross. I'm talking about in your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Another thing, uh, when I was talking about tough times in trucking, it's it's an illusion, y'all. Hey, trucking still can. It's no. There's no job going to pay you better than you're going to make owning your own truck. A, a good job going to pay you like fifty to 75000 a year. If you got an excellent job, you might be in there one twenty, one fifty. Yeah, I mean, how long it take you to get up there? Mm -hmm. I mean, fucking degrees and shit you got to go. You already went to school for fucking 12 years because you got kids and you're going part-time. <coughs> then you get out of school, you got to stop at the base level and pay your dues. Then it's going to take you five to seven years to get up to them higher levels. There ain't nothing gonna pay you like trucking. Even as a company driver, you know, Walmart paying drivers 120. You know, it's people that got fucking IT uh, degrees and, and all, went to school to do all that type of shit. They ain't making but like 70, 80,000. Mm -hmm. So don't get it fucked up. Trucking is still king. Also, when Bill was in here, I, I trying to be courteous and not keep cutting them off, but he was tapping into that depression thing and losing trucks and all that. Y'all going to lose trucks, it happens. I lost my first set of trucks down the port. Uh, I was smashing them. Then I went and bought two trucks, went in there, looked me dead in the eye, I said, what do you think you're doing? And I was talking about the network. Mm -hmm. You know, this 
and I was 27 at the time. I should have been doing like 450 something thousand a year. And um, they slowed me up because mm -hmm. I was moving too fast. And so the old heads told me in the beginning, um, don't put all your trucks at the same place. Don't put all your trucks leased on at the same company because they start counting your money and they're mm -hmm. looking at you as a unit. Mm -hmm. And you got to think of this batch, and I only made me what, 40, 50,000, maybe 60 if they've been with the company a long time. And you 30 something years old and you make an X amount of hundreds a year. That ain't looking good to them. Why? Because of human nature. It happened with your friends. When you start excelling and they not, a little bit of hate starting on them. A little, little jokes and snickers. Them jokes and jokes. Ain't jokes. Right. People, human beings can't stand to see uh, progress. Matter of fact, uh, that's why they always talk about new level, new devil, and all this dumb shit. I ain't in the games, never have been, but some of y'all are. Uh, every level, you got to fight a new monster or whatever in order to get more and more talent. Y'all think this is easy for me? What I just told you, I slept in the car all week. I didn't even go home. Like, I just got back from Chicago four something this morning. I drove straight, slept in the car across the street. This is it's a sacrifice. Y'all, all these seminars I host for y'all, every single time a major catastrophe happened to try to stop me from coming here to teach y'all. Mm. I don't talk about it because for what? To solve the problem. But what I'm saying is the more you try to achieve, there's going to be opposing forces. Mm -hmm. So we were just doing electrical testing techniques and one of the principles is of electricity is the uh, protons and electrons. And the uh, protons are positive, but the more uh, protons you have, the electrons, which is negative, start to attract to it. And that's what creates the magnetic field and electricity. So as you start doing good, don't think it, what the Bible say, think it not strange. And don't, don't, uh, don't think it's out of the way for all type of shit to start happening to you to try to get you to quit. And it's the winners that don't stop. There's a book I read called uh, Think and Grow Rich and it talk about three feet from gold. Mm -hmm. And the people will quit and they right there. Mm -hmm. Anybody, by the time you see somebody that's super successful, they've been through a whole lot of shit. Mm -hmm. That's what build their skin so thick to be able to handle what they got now and be able to troubleshoot and go through all the different issues like it ain't nothing because they built up a tolerance. Like you said you've been in the gym, you work out. You know, the more weights you lift, the more tolerance you got for it. If you ain't out there, you ain't gonna be able to get out there with the big dogs. You know what I mean? People I know that went out and, and just because they had money and went and bought trucks and don't got them no more, mm. they didn't build up from the beginning. That's why it's good to be a driver on the operator, mm -hmm. on the thotty, that you get to handle different levels of the game and be able to understand it more. And at a higher level, you need to start getting into this diagnostic stuff. I ain't promoting from them. I'm trying to tell y'all, you going out and getting newer trucks because you think an older truck going to be breaking down and shit on you. That newer truck can cause you so many fucking problems. I had a newer truck. These trucks, damn, they brand new, 100-something thousand miles on them. Got a square on the bumper. I thought that was with a tag going. It. It's a fucking sensor. That shit is a space sensor. I didn't know. I was young in the game. And that shit sent me to the deal so much before they came and told me what that shit was. I had a, a newer truck. That shit took three times to get home. That shit kept cutting off. And I'm running hard as shit. Fucking flying out the fucking uh, Indiana. Fucking. Cut down a little ass time, catching the grave time, no sleep for days. Mm -hmm. So what y'all going through now on your way up, it's going to build your skin. Anybody got any questions or input? This ain't the Sean show. We all here to help each other. Actually, I wish some of the guys that was here before, because I'm really disappointed because um, this ain't supposed to be about me. I'm bringing in people to come and talk to y'all because I want them to continue what I've been doing, and I see ain't nobody been reaching out to help me out since I done fell back. And it's supposed to continue on, and everybody's supposed to be a chain reaction where everybody's helping everybody, and that's the only way we're going to get ahead, because we're really behind, y'all. Y'all think getting a truck and getting your authority is the end of the game? You ain't in the game. That's the water boy. I had conversations with people with 150 trucks. People selling 50 trucks at a time. Big boys. We're not even... 
we ain't even on the radar. We so far behind and we worried about getting fresh. Priorities. With the life in there, the book. Get the book, read it. Get it on Amazon or, or YouTube. Listen to it while you're driving. We can cut our cost of living down and reprioritize our life and start buying shit that's, uh, what's your boy saying, big uh, baby boy, guns and butter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that nigga funny. I wouldn't have took it right while I'm talking to you like that. Cause first of all, who the hell you think you talking to? <laughs> but what he's saying was legit. Y'all know how many tools I done bought since the last time y'all done seen me? I done spent thousands of dollars in tools. I got a whole everything somebody need for a shop. How y'all doing? Life in there. Like millionaire, life in there. Yeah. How y'all doing? Yeah, we did the dancing class back then. What's up, Drew? How you doing? Tell me, how's the baby? Yeah. What's up? Anybody got any questions? Huh? Um, I, I don't know if it's a question or not, but. Well, input. I, like I said, this ain't the Sean show. Yeah, I think the first seminar I came to you, I was coming you, to you while you went to school. You got it, people, ain't you? Yep. Yeah. He on his way up here. That's what he called me. I remember. Um, but um, the second time I came to your seminar, I was getting ready to go to school. Since you had went missing, you know what I'm saying? I was released. Uh, went to school, got on, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. comfortable driving. Um, Before you go ahead, very important principle. Uh, well, some of y'all don't know, my, one of my mentors is Pimpin' Ken out of Milwaukee. And uh, I say, game ain't given, it's spilt. That's why they talk about soaking up game. But let me just throw something on you. I didn't go missing. I went focused. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got a whole lot of fucking distractions in their life. Got all these people calling your phone. Got all this shit going on at home. Run this bullshit, but we live together, we ain't together. A fucking noisy ass house. You need to quiet the fucking noise down and focus on what you're trying to do. That's how you get ahead. Some of y'all need to fucking cut y'all phone off. I went to, like probably about a month with no phone mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. You, you, it's, it's a principle uh, about the magnifying glass. The sun comes down, it can heat you up. You take a magnifying glass, focus, you can set something on fire. If you focus, I'm telling you, I started the trucking company from losing everything in fucking 60 days as a company driver. So if you've been driving three, four, five years and you don't have a truck yet, I'm not blaming you. What I'm telling you is if you cut a whole bunch of shit out of your life and focus, you can do the shit real fast and then get on to the good stuff. But cut is a temporary sacrifice. Yeah, but that, that, that while you just focusing up, a lot of people, you know, they follow you, you know what I'm saying? They go by your guys. It become like a um, a truck came by that we be looking for, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but and that's 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 a fallacy because that's like if you're going to a church or a mosque and now you, your whole life is revolved around the imam or the pastor mm-hmm. when you got the Bible sitting on your, your dresser. True. You're using that as a piece, a piece of furniture. Yeah. People go to church now and ain't read the Bible. Just listen to what the, how you know he telling you was right. Mm-hmm. Not only that, I try to provoke in y'all fucking initiative. How y'all think I learned all this shit? Ain't well, nobody telling me shit. People don't want to tell you nothing back then. I had to, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on my education. I'm trying to tell you. I made a whole lot of mistakes. Then, People call, never even open the website. Ain't read none of the books to have a, a foundation. So what if something happened to me? That's another thing, you know, on the why. I don't know how this city is. I don't talk about it a lot because the words have power. You can't be so prosperous around these niggas. And the way our laws is set up, because I done lived in the South, you can open carry. You don't need no license. We don't even have a self-defense law. So what if something happened to me? Then that's an excuse to, 
wither away. Not talking about you in particular. I'm saying in general. So it's no. It's, it's it all boiled down to the individual. Um, but go ahead. Well, and I appreciate I appreciate people turning in and being a part of that. But this is a sacrifice on my part. I don't even like being around people. I'm not even talking to you. I like helping people, and I can't stop because it's a part of my personality. But this is a sacrifice for me doing this for y'all. I don't like being out in the forefront. I only pictures I'm used to taking the center and my cousins and them from Hagerstown to Cumberland and Eastern Shore and all these different places. Right. Matter of fact, when we was coming up, pictures wasn't even that was frowned upon. See the police. I'm saying I did that to lure y'all into the game. To change our life. Well, go ahead. And, and then also what I said about being disappointed. Y'all are supposed to carry on. How many people are born in here that have trucks? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, but when, when we spoke the other day, a lot of them, all, them people was people that was calling me and didn't even have a truck. And then the two, three years got fleets. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So... You know, but go ahead. Guy, he was selling cars, wasn't he? Yep, he was selling cars. He went from Washington, Tenton, South You know how many people I fucking uh, consult with in prison? I still do a prison correspondence. Mm -hmm. The people get out. You know how many people in the feds got real money to send it at home, starting companies for their families and their cousins and stuff? This shit is not supposed to stop with me. It starts with me. So, all right, and you're talking about religion, whether you believe in uh, the Bible or not, let's say you do. What would have happened if, when Jesus was crucified, or when uh, the Prophet Muhammad left us, the whole show stopped? <laughs> then what, you gonna have people running around lawlessness all over the place, pillaging, raping? It's a, this is a start, it's supposed to continue, and it all takes everybody, all of y'all, you have to come in person in order to be around people because the real benefit to going to seminars and workshops and stuff is not the information. All the information is in books. I was just doing a five-day training. Everything they told us was in the information, but the people that I met there, the people that have been on the shop for 30, 40 years, the mechanical information that I got from the conversations, the phone numbers that I got, all of y'all should be seeing y'all throughout the city and be a brother and a sister to one another. It don't stop with me. It stop with me. I'm trying to inject my spirit into y'all so it can rub off. So go ahead. Well, uh, since the, I think the last seminar that I've been to, you had leaders at the seminar. Yeah. The last one. I mean, we like this now. You know what I'm saying? I, I take all the truckers to him. Um, the company I work for. He's smart the, as hell, too, ain't he? Yeah. Outside of mechanics. That yeah. man brilliant. Good dude. You know, so um, outside of that, you know, this one is a dispatcher for the company that I work for. Right. I even got her to come here. That's why her stuff followed me. You know what I'm saying? Because dispatchers are important. You know, um, I say dispatch is important because. If they in the company, not that shit, they scammed y'all. <laughs> they sold y'all. Look, they saw an opportunity to sell information and they took advantage of people, uh, human beings, internal wanting something for nothing. And they said, well, we got all y'all seven y'all truck information, but what about the people who don't have money to buy a truck? Oh yeah, you know you can start a dispatch company. You don't need no money, no trucks, no nothing. <clears throat> Give me $400, I'll teach you how to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you sell that to a thousand people and then how much money you got? Off an ad that you even put a thousand dollars into? You see the game, remember what I was talking to y'all about earlier? That's why I don't be telling y'all, because I know what's up. And they say you're supposed to be the change you want to see. So that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in this case, like, um, the dispatch would be the ones we'd be in contact with all day. You know what I'm saying? You at this location when your company drives. Yeah. You know, and now, uh, now, let's make the distinction between the, dispatch, the dispatchers. There are dispatchers that work for companies that are employees, like secretaries, that orchestrate the loads. Then there's the dispatcher that is independent, that wants to book loads for you, that own the trucking company and take a percentage. They're two different things. That's a scam. It can happen, but it's highly unlikely. Because nobody with a trucking company needed dispatch. They already booking their own loads. Right. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, but um, basically, I'm coming up, you know. Uh, got your license now, since then. Got my license, been um, three months driving, you know, and my three months driving, I jumped straight in. You know, I ain't even want to go back home. When they gave me the opportunity to get in the sleeper, I told my wife I ain't coming back home. Like, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't home. I ain't coming back home no more. She did, but she didn't tell you, I don't go home. I sleep in the truck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They, they got me to be the whole Eastern region. That's know? that's sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, Mac- you got enough. Boston, Connecticut, you know what I'm saying? All up and down the mountains and stuff like that. Not to cut you off. Mm-hmm. You got enough experience to get your truck now. That's I, what I'm in the makers of doing right now. Yeah doing right now but it's also rubbing shoulders you know like I try to come here to rub shoulders with um, good people you know brokers um, I try to always rub my shoulders like if I got somebody I'm close with they, they, they got somebody good brokers that they're dealing with um, you know talk to them let them know you got some people you know what I'm saying that's good you know speak on my bad I don't have no accidents you know what I'm saying um, that's not going to matter but depending on what you what you trying to do? You going to help your peoples out and, and stick with their company, or you going to try to start your own? Um, but not try to start. Right now, so it's it's basically like uh, I need to become owner operator because I can't be nothing being a company man but pay my bills. You know what I'm saying? I can't stack no bread. You got kids? I got kids. That yeah, live with you. Need. Right, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm on a mission. You, you like you say, you got to this, 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 this is what I would suggest, and also, um, I'm not married. Mm, so, I'm married. Right, but what I'm saying is, what I teach y'all, you can't, if you're going to take advice from somebody, it has to be from somebody that has what you want or has been in your shoes and got where you're trying to go. That's a, a program I'm going through now by Kevin Trito. Who do you listen to? Mm-hmm. You don't listen to people that's doing what you're doing. You listen to people that got what you want or prove that they can get it or had it. So I'm not married, so I can't tell you how to carry it with your wife, and I wouldn't get personal anyway. But if I would say anything and you got the type of relationship where you can tell her you're going to be gone for a few months, I, I would uh, go to a real nice restaurant and have a talk and say, look, <laughs> no, but you really gotta have a real serious plan. Say, look, this is what I'm about to do. And once this shit get right, then you ain't gotta do nothing no more. But for these next couple months, I need you to carry everything so I can get this truck. And if you're willing to do that, then after that, you ain't never gotta work no more. I came up with a contingency plan. I started foster care. You know what I'm saying? Got two foster kids. So this is my whole thing. Foster kids bring in, what, four grand a month for two kids? Yeah, what you doing, chimes? Huh? What you doing, chimes? State. Yeah, my mother used to do it. Mm-hmm. State and rest, you know. So my whole thing is um, the foster kids, uh, my wife stay there, take care of the kids. You know, she ain't working. So in other words, the money is there, so she can do it. She can do it. I know, see. She told me she was going to leave me. What, like two weeks ago? She was like, man, I, I want a divorce. I'm like, well, look. I can't, right now, <laughs> I'm trying to chase my dreams and do what I got to do. Right, so you see what I just said? Yeah, so yeah, where go? remember what I know, that what I'm saying, don't take my advice and then leave your wife and then you call me. Listen, if she can't, can't work, the wife, yeah. wife will leave him. Yeah, so if, it's she like, if she can't, if she can't, it's like, why can't I leave you? It's like, I'm on the streets, I had to stay out all day, you know what I'm saying, come back in. Two o'clock in the morning, leave back out. Says, if she can't stay with me while I'm while I'm doing this, she gotta go. Bro. She ain't respecting your grind. Yeah, she, she gotta, gotta go. go. All right, well, I'm gonna let y'all y'all hey, married men here y'all talk that's, that's because uh, that's what in, in, in reality when they talk about uh you, you take a village to raise a, a right. kid, yeah. but what's the office in the village? Elders. Mm-hmm. We don't need psychologists. We supposed to have trusted people that we can go and talk to, and people who are older. You know, people out here, you see all these people giving the relationship advice online? Yeah. They ain't even got no damn body. Because mm-hmm. yeah. if you did, why you just spent all that money on your body to try to attract somebody? Mm-hmm. But, but to be honest, um, but, but what I'm getting at is older statesmen. So I want to hear what you say because you've been married. You're a senior man. A lot of us <clears throat> never had fathers and we was all raising each other. Mm-hmm. 14, 15, and we figuring life out. Uh, what was missing is, is the fathers and the grandfathers. So he been married and he would talk about the big, 
being sick with five's wisdom. Let's hear what you guys say. And your wife is here. So she gonna put you out there if you tell me something wrong. <laughs> I gotta go, man. All right. My name is Anthony Corpure, and I'm the owner of Pete Corpure Transport. Pete Corp? Pete Corpure. Um, 